Amanamet the third, son of Senraset the third, doing what he has been doing since he co-ruled with Senraset the third, something that rulers in Egypt always did if they were of age, they would rule with their fathers, and he did that. But there's something very interesting going on. One, we start to see some of the Bible stories, especially those in Exodus, being taken from this time. But we're not too sure if they're the exact stories or they just have copies. You know, stories about the the blood, the sea turning into blood, stuff like that. But the Hyksos start playing a more, you know, significant role in a way. In that this is the time when the proto-synatic script gets developed. I mean, we've heard about it over and over again. The Egyptians invented the writing systems of the world that use alphabet. But this is the time, the 12th dynasty, that we start to see the script being taken and changed into the proto-synatic script. Now we know that the Egyptians played a huge role in the proto-synatic script and we know that the Hyksos played a huge role in the proto-synatic script. But we don't know exactly who we should credit for creating the alphabet between these two people. Now to go back to Amenemat the third, he also did a lot of great missions. First of all, in Fayum, he built a pyramid, and that pyramid is called the Black Pyramid. But not only that, he starts bringing back farming in a huge way. The, his farming missions are just incredible compared to what has come before. Then in Nubia, we find mines and mines and mines of, you know, Things that are, this shows you how relatively stable this time was from any other time. Then we have the Cone Math Papyrus, where we see math being portrayed in a very deep way. And remember, 200 years before this dynasty was the last time a pyramid was built. So for the math to be back in the way that it is now, in these papyri is very very important this means this is now we're done you know now we're talking the alphabet gets developed glass exists clothing is becoming better trade is becoming solid the Nubians are kind of starting to respect the Egyptians the Hyksos are respecting them enough to start copying their language which, by the way, the Hyksos might be the original, you know, the original people who came up with some of the Bible stories. Let's quickly zoom into some of the things that I'll be talking about. Like, for example, the Kohun Papyrus, or the Rhine Papyrus, as it's called, if they zoom into just the math part of it, has all kinds of detail from algebra, uh, math, arithmetic, um division square rooting geometry it's just got all kinds of things that and a lot of these uh geometries and stuff they predate the dominance of the hyksos which like i say right now the domination is still the egyptians what will happen the kaun papyrus isn't just limited only to this uh, mathematical text it also shows medical texts and it also shows stories and just other stuff that you can find in there the Kaun papyri it's multiple and so this is what we get to see in this prosperous time things were going well they had egypt by the palm of their hand and then they had nubia and parts of asia as far as syria and israel in their hand during the time of Amenemet. But you know, like the movie The Prince of Egypt says, it takes one weak link to break the bounds of a mighty chain. So we see over here, we have the letters of the um, Greeks, 
the Akkadians, the Proto-Sinatic, Egyptian, and then the Minoans. And this will show how these all came from the same place. And you see here that the Egyptian script and the Akkadian script kept the meaning of the word. Whereas the other ones, they got the word, but kind of got rid of the meaning. So we see here with, let's first go down to Greeks. We see Alpha, Beta, Dalit, uh, Epsilon, Gimel, Eta, Lota, Kappa, Lambda, Mem, Nun, Ain, Pe, Kop, Resh, Smak, Sade, Shin, or Sigma, Tau, Teta, Epsilon and Zeta or Zayin. And you can see here that Alpha is Alpu, which is a bull in Akkadian. And in Proto-Sinatic, you can see that they depict a bull, showing you the halfway between the bull in Egyptian and the bull in, in the other one, in Akkadian. Beta, Beta is a house in Akkadian. We see that they draw a floor plan that looks like a house. Again, interestingly, in some Bantu languages, the word um, by is a enclosure. And you see here, it's an enclosure. I don't want to give the word vulva, because I'm good on that. Uh, daltu, door. You see here, delta, daltu is a door. Um, epsilon, or ebisu, is a rope. Uh, gimel. Or Gamlu is a scythe. Uh, Hatu or Het is panic. And you see there, there's a dude panicking. And you can see it, it, it. Just look at it in Minoan, Egyptian, and Akkadian. They all just keep matching one after the other. And the theory by David Olmsted is actually pretty beautiful here. You can see here, here's another one, Nunu which Nun and Zul is a monster, but this is brilliant here what you have. Ein is the eyes or the moon, really. Ein. And you can see here, moon on sky shell. This is a moon. Uh, Pasu is a battle axe. And then you got here, uh, if we keep going down, let's just go straight to the last one. Uh, Zikatu, which is a fish. Apu, raining cloud. Upu, raining cloud. Tatu, contribution to Tatu, is contribution coin. Tilpanu, a bow. Sindu. Sedu, Samaku, full grown, Shamak. Uh, yeah. Basically, you have all of these almost fully matching. Go down to the bottom and we see all kinds of things. We go to Mu. This is one of the most, uh, interesting things because culture to the other even though things are left out and it tells us a lot about how transition works from one culture to the other that you can transition and still keep things even though the context is lost the Minoans that existed at the exact same time as the ancient Egyptians I mean, Minoans have existed for like th since 3000 BC, but these Minoans that invented script, you can see their trade with Egypt, and then you can also see it's written 1875 BC to 17 B 1700 BC. This lines up with the 12th dynasty. So the development of the Minoan writing systems, Cretan hieroglyphics, and Linear A, it ended with mass destruction, generally attributed to earthquakes, though violent destruction has been considered as an alternative explanation. So we see here, but if we look at this king's list of foreign kings in Egypt, we see here that the 
Minoan is depicted as the darkest of the four. You see the three Asiatics, and then you see a Minoan who's depicted as very dark. And this is interesting because DNA evidence has shown that the Minoans are no different than other Europeans, except that they have historical European DNA rather than modern one. But it's interesting to see that how dark they're depicted compared to the rest. Their hair is wavy, that part is obvious, but the fact that they're depicted as so dark, even darker than the Egyptians, is crazy. Depictions by Minoans themselves don't help in this because they make it seem like Europeans were brown. But you can't say this brown was simply a tan or something like that because you look at the white one and the white one's not tan. Is it that we're looking at how the white European race transitioned from a very dark skin to a light skin? Was this the period? Especially considering that the Minoans have less of a ancient DNA, I forgot whether it's early hunter-gatherers, Europe than the Greeks. Is this the transition period being depicted for us and we're just ignoring it? Anyway, Amenemetep dies. His son or stepson, no one knows, takes over. And that's what we're going to talk about.